everybody. Today we're going to be reading Proverbs 12 and I thought I'd make it a little nice nighttime ASMR, make it feel more cozy with my one lamp up here. And yeah. There's a thunderstorm happening right now and it's been raining on and off. So I mean I was just like let's embrace it and I opened up all the windows. You guys should be able to hear the thunder. There's maybe some cars passing by. And um, the, the nighttime noise. So relax, close your eyes, and let's read. Proverbs 12. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. <laughs> wow, God is uh, direct on this, huh? <laughs> That's funny, actually. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but the Lord condemns a crafty man. A man cannot be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. Wicked men are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous stands firm. A man is praised according to his wisdom, but men with warped minds are despised. Better to be a nobody and yet have a servant, then pretend to be somebody and have no food. A righteous man cares for the needs of his animal, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. He who works his land will have abundant food, but he who chases fantasies lacks judgment. The wicked desire the plunder of evil men, but the root of the righteous flourishes. An evil man is trapped by his sinful talk, but a righteous man escapes trouble. From the fruit of his lips, a man is filled with good things, as surely as the work of his hands rewards him. The way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. A fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. A truthful witness gives honest testimony, but a false witness tells lies. Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. There is deceit in the hearts of those who plot evil, but a joy for those who promote peace. No harm befalls the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips but he delights in men who are truthful. A prudent man keeps his knowledge to himself, but the heart of fools burns out folly. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. An anxious, an anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. 
A righteous man is cautious in friendship, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy man does not roast his game, but the diligent man prizes his possessions. In the way of righteousness there is life. Among that path is immortality. Short chapter, but I think my favorite verse is I feel like in my life I used to say a lot of stuff that would not, like wouldn't be rude, upright, but like there was no reason to say something like that. And then perhaps someone would take it in a rude fashion. Um, so I think I learned to be more thoughtful and mindful of what I have to say. And verse 18 really shows, I think, what I've been trying to do. It says, Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And I think just knowing when to say things, and in, a, in which way, what certain way you would say them in, you know, would, is very, is a very very good skill to have and just being able to know when is the appropriate time to say something and when is it and more so than that I think not saying reckless words I mean saying things or gossiping about things that you really shouldn't be talking about or you, there's no need to talk about but you know we all have that moment where we know something and we just really want to share it with someone or like really want to just tell someone about it, you know, um, whether it's to like impress them or like just because you have nothing interesting to say, but really holding back in those moments and not saying something may be the right call instead of saying something, you know, don't say things just for the sake of saying it and definitely don't say things to lower others. Verse 1. If you don't want to learn, years of schooling will teach you very little. But if you want to be taught, there is no end to what you can learn. This includes being willing to accept discipline or correction to learn from a wisdom, to learn from the wisdom of others. Mm. A person who refuses constructive criticism has a problem with pride. Such a person is unlikely to learn very much. True. To be established means to be successful. Real success only comes to those who know what is right, who do what is right, and know. Their efforts stand the test of time. Then, what kind of success does wickedness bring? We all know people who cheated to pass a course or to get a larger tax refund. Is this not success? And what about the person who ignores his family commitments and mistreats his workers but gets ahead in business? These apparent successes are only temporary. They are, blot they are bought at the expense of character. Cheaters grow more and more dishonest and those who hurt others become more callous and cruel. In the long run, evil behavior does not lead to success. It only leads to more evil. Real success maintains personal integrity. If you, are not, if you are not a success by God's standards, you have not achieved true success. That's true, I mean, even though you may be ahead 
like successful, like making money and you know doing all these things. Maybe you might be considered successful in the in the in, in the worldly worldly sense, but you are not successful in God's eyes and all that cheating and all that manipulating, you know, really changes who you are and changes your character. And that's not worth losing. Twelve thirteen. Sinful talk is twisting the facts to support your claims. Those who do this are likely to be trapped by their own lies. But for someone who always tells the truth... Wow, that was big thunder. But for someone who always tells the truth, the facts, plain and unvarnished, give an unshakable defense. If you find that you, are always, that you always have to defend yourself to others, maybe your honesty is less than it should be. Mm, that's a good one to think about. If you always feel like you have to defend yourself on your actions or feel insecure about your actions or what you say, I mean, maybe, yeah, you are you may think that you are honest, but... I got a smudge. I got a smudge on my glasses. You have to always defend yourself and everything on and what you do, you know, and what you say. Maybe, uh, maybe your honesty is a little less than you thought, and you might have to reconsider. Always good to be humble and you know, open to thinking, thinking these things. Twelve sixteen. When someone annoys or insults you, it is natural to retaliate. But this solves nothing and only encourages trouble. Instead of ans instead oh sorry instead answer slowly and quietly. Your positive response will achieve positive results. Proverbs fifteen one says a gentle answer turns away wrath. Yeah, I mean if you've ever like tried to like whisper when you're angry. Um, or like talk very softly when you're angry. I think it it really shows, you know. I think it's 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 a it's a more effective way of communicating your feelings than yelling. Because I feel like people listen even more like when you're like scaredly quiet and you're like angry, you know. Twelve nineteen. Truth is always timely. It applies today and in the future. Because it is connected with God's changeless character, it is also changeless. Think for a moment about the centuries that have passed since these proverbs were written. Consider the countless hours that have been sent, spent carefully studying every sentence of the scripture. The Bible has withstood, with, withstood the test of time. Because God is the truth, and you can and you can trust His word to guide you. Yeah, how old is the Bible, and how how often are we even like connecting to it right now? It's pretty cool. Twelve twenty one. This is general but not universal truth. Although harm does befall the righteous, they are able to see opportunities in their problems and move forward. The wicked, without God's wisdom, are ill-equipped to handle their problems. Hmm. 12.23 Prudent people have a quiet confidence. Insecure or uncertain people feel the need to prove themselves, but prudent people don't have to prove anything. They know they are capable, so they get on with their work. Beware of showing off. If you are modest, People may not notice you at first, but they will respect you later. Mm. 1227 The diligent make wise use of their possessions and resources. The lazy waste them. Waste has a way of life. 
um, for many who live in a land of plenty. Waste this poor stewardship. Make good use of everything God has given you and prize it. Hmm. For many, death is a darkened door at the end of life, a passageway to an unknown and feared destiny. But for God's people, death is a bright pathway to a better and new life. So why do we fear death? Is it because of the pain we expect, the separation from loved ones, its surprise? God can help us deal with those fears. He has shown us that death is not final. It is just another step in the eternal life we received when we followed him. Mm. You have not mastered self- Oh, oh, sorry. That's the next chapter. And I guess we're done with that. Yeah, so that was chapter 12. I really liked it, actually. A lot of talk about speech and... Very, very good applications in this chapter to things in our lives. And hopefully you guys enjoyed that. planning on making a video on Wednesday this week sorry there hasn't been a Wednesday video in like two weeks I think um, but I think I, I'm just gonna might do another mukbang um, I have an idea oh and I could maybe do a singing one for next week and I do have an idea of doing some sort of ASMR funny video type of deal but I'll have to think about it more and I can I think prepare more if I'm actually gonna do it um, like I said I'm, I'm pretty camera shy but we'll see if I can muster up the courage yeah so I mean yeah hope you guys enjoyed do a couple more page flips for you guys Should be around you guys. And see you guys on Wednesday.